Today we will be covering a serial killer who was born 40 minutes away from where I currently live. His troubled childhood, multiple head injuries, and the hatred he felt for women merged to create a violent serial rapist and killer. Robert Joseph Long was born on October 14, 1953 in Canova, West Virginia, to parents Luella and Joe. His parents split up when Bobby was a young child. Luella moved to Florida with her son and had primary custody of him. Bobby did not have the easiest childhood. He was born with an extra X chromosome, also known as 47XXY, which is a specific type of Klinefelter syndrome. This condition meant that his body made too much estrogen and caused him to develop gynecomastia, which is extra breast tissue in men. And he was teased about this throughout his childhood. He even had a breast reduction surgery as a teenager. During childhood, he also failed the first grade, suffered multiple head injuries, and developed a disdain for women thanks to his mother. He despised her because she worked in a bar, dressed in revealing clothing, and brought home a string of men. To make matters worse, Bobby shared a bed with his mother until he was a teenager. When he was 13, he met his future wife, Cynthia. The couple married in 1974 and welcomed two children. The stress of parenthood was not good for this relationship. During this time, Bobby was involved in a serious accident. He was hit by a vehicle while riding his motorcycle, which landed him in the hospital for several weeks. Cynthia claimed that following this accident, his temperament changed. He had always been short-tempered, but he was now physically violent with her and more impatient with the children. Bobby also developed an overt, dangerous, and compulsive sex drive. Crime analysts would later label this behavior as sexual obsession and deem Bobby a sexual sadist. In 1980, Cynthia had enough and filed for divorce from Bobby. He moved in with a female friend by the name of Sharon Richards. Later, this friend would accuse Bobby of battery and rape. In 1983, Nasty Ass Bobby was charged with sending a 12-year-old girl, a child, an inappropriate sexually explicit letter, complete with disgusting photos. This earned him a short jail visit and probation. Bobby decided this was prime time to escalate his level of violence. He would scope out for sale signs on houses or scan the classified ads for people selling furniture and other items. This gave him the opportunity to enter an unsuspecting woman's home and force his nasty self on her. According to police, this method allowed him to commit over 50 rapes. Bobby escalated yet again and committed his first murder. He picked up a sex worker by the name of Artis Wick in March of 1984. At first, this was just a means to fulfill his sexual needs but after assaulting and raping her, he felt unfulfilled, and he decided to strangle and kill her instead. In May of 1984, while driving through Tampa, he saw a young lady walking by the name of Lana Young. Bobby offered her a ride, and she accepted. Shortly after she got into the car, he pulled off to the side of the road and pulled a knife on her. When Lana panicked and began to scream and fight, Bobby tied her up and drove to an even more remote area. Once there, he raped and strangled her. Police reported that her body was found a few days later, face down with her hands bound behind her back, and her legs spread unnaturally far apart. They reportedly measured a horrifying five feet from one heel to the other. Side note, I am only five foot one. I couldn't imagine seeing a body in this condition. The next unlucky victim was 22-year-old Michelle Sims, a sex worker. Bobby lured her to his car, then violently beat and raped her. He ended this attack by slashing her throat repeatedly. This crime was later linked to the murder of Lana Young when it was discovered that a red nylon fiber was found on both women. Elizabeth Loudenbach, victim number four, was located roughly 17 days after she was killed. She was found fully clothed, lying on her back, and unlike Long's usual victims, she was not a sex worker or addict. Side note, I do not believe that just because someone is an addict or a sex worker that they are disposable. They are humans too and don't deserve to be murdered. Victim number five, Chanel Williams, a young sex worker, was minding her business walking down a Tampa street when Bobby picked her up. He went on to rape and attempt to strangle her. When this failed, he pulled out a gun and shot her in the neck. Two additional murders followed shortly after, the victims being Karen Dinn's friend and Kimberly Hopps. In November of 1984 in northern Tampa, Bobby had his eye on a girl riding her bike, 17-year-old Lisa McVeigh. He dragged her to his car and forced her to perform oral sex on him. Then he brought her to his apartment. He forced her to shower with him and repeatedly raped her. Unlike his other victims, she was left alive after he treated her as a sex slave for more than 24 hours. She was brave and her testimony would thankfully lead police to Bobby Joe Long. 
Bobby sadly killed two additional victims, Virginia Johnson and Kim Swan. Lisa McVeigh gave a good description of her attacker and his vehicle. Police caught up with Bobby Joe Long and arrested him at a movie theater near his home in Tampa. Once in custody, the police linked those mysterious red fibers I mentioned earlier to the carpeting in his car. He was also linked to the recently found murder victim, Vicki Elliott. In April of 1985, Bobby was convicted of first-degree murder in the Virginia Johnson case. Later, he pled guilty to eight additional murders from Hillsborough County. He was convicted of these and several other charges. The court handed down more than two dozen life in prison sentences. In the summer of 1986, he was sentenced to death by electric chair for the murder of Michelle Sims. Bobby confessed to 10 murders, but alluded to there being more. Sadly, he wasn't put to death in an electric chair, but he was put to death by lethal injection on May 23, 2019. And guess who sat front row to watch? Lisa McVeigh, because she wanted to be the first person he saw on his way to hell. So I have a few thoughts. Firstly, Lisa McVeigh is a total badass. Secondly, it will never cease to amaze me how many violent offenders have prior head injuries. Thirdly, violence against women is an indicator that they will escalate their behavior and go on to kill. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.